like to say welcome back, and we're actually nearing the end of the series, and actually nearing the end of quite possibly my my videos here to YouTube. Um, so that should take it to come as a relief to my wife who um, videotapes these for me. Um, so. Anyway, I'm combining two separate groups today because there's not really much to say on either one. Hi, Daddy. Oh, by the way, I just want to... This is my son, Josh. He's the one I made the tool toolbox for. I'm uh, sorry, the toy box for. Tools or toys, just for big men. Say hi to people in YouTube land. Say hi. Hi. <laughs> say bye now. Bye. <laughs> All right. Anyway, the two groups I'm going are clamps and shaping tools. Cla well, clamps, vices, and shaping tools. Clamps hold work steady in a static position to, so you can work them. A vice, like this woodworker's vice, are basically immobile. You mount them to a bench, and they don't move. It's as simple as that. Clamps can be moved. Uh, there are different types of clamps. Um, this right here. Oh, thank you. Um, this right here is a parallel clamp. It has two large jaws um, that are meant to clamp work parallel and square to each other. This is an F clamp, which it works by providing localized pressure. <laughs> um, a, you have a movable jaw that's secured by a clamp that you, its own clamp <laughs> that you release to move it to whatever, to an initial depth, then use the adjustment screw to do the final tightening. You have a deep reach F clamp which goes by a friction fit. You, you pull on the handle to loosen it, but then at, when it's set and you turn the screw, it causes the, the bottom arm to tilt and lock into place. A pipe clamp, which is actually one of my favorite types of clamp, um, a jaw that is static, which all, all the arm clamps, which I call them arm clamps because they're basically an arm with two jaws on. But here, but on the, the previous one, the movable jaw is the one that has the screw. Whereas on a pipe clamp, the movable jaw doesn't have a screw. It's a static one that does. And all those work on the same concept. And basically, you're limited in clamping size to however long the bar is. This is a traditional wooden clamp. It has two threaded screws that you turn to open and close them. This this is good because it, they really don't mar your work and because you can adjust the angle. They're good for um, oh, clamping um, odd shaped work. This is a modern invention, the spring clamp. You basically just open it up, pull a trigger to clamp, and it has a spring here that allows it to quickly go to an initial depth. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, see, clamps, they're more of a metal working clamp, but they're good for holding jigs down. Here, the arm and the top jaw are one piece and the maximum depth is controlled by the distance between your screw and top. Hold fast works by going into a hole in the bench. The work goes underneath it and then you hit it with a mallet. This causes the hold fast to cock which causes two, fret, two pinch points at the bottom and at the top. And it's that friction that holds it in place. Um, they're extremely fast and they're the ones that I use the most. 
special purpose clamps, um, like the light duty clamp, uh, light duty corner clamp uh, for holding miter picture frames in place. And as you can see, this one is busted. Um, this is a Stanley light duty miter clamp. Stanley discontinued making them. And I can guess the reason why is because they're probably one of the worst clamps I've ever used. Now, in previous series, you know that I've promoted Stanley to the point where you probably think I'm a company shill. But the fact is, these clamps suck. And they suck because they have a C-ring. And even under the lightest pressure, that C-ring pops off. Um, Pony, uh, which is made by Jorgensen, make corner clamps, which are much better because they have a full ring. In fact, you can actually see this one, the C clamps, the, the C ring has popped out. So if you, these are no longer made, but if you see them on the secondary market, avoid them. Um, this here is a heavy duty corner clamp, which is much nicer. As you can see, it has a 45V here and jaws, and you just twist the screw to bring it into the work to hold it fast. In fact, here's the pony clamp, and here's the full ring here. Much better clamp, and widely available. Um, and that's basically clamps and vices. They just hold things still while you work on them. Shaping tools are tools that, like the file that my son took off my bench, were kind of like planes in that they help shape things, but they're, they're really rough. Here is an example. I'll show you. And, and basically there's three types. There are files, rasp, and in the 20th century, surfforms were developed. Rasp are the oldest. They have teeth that are cut into a piece of iron or steel that are used to cut. And they do shape the wood fairly quickly, but they're rough. And these are mainly used on shape pieces, like table legs and things of that nature. Surf forms are pieces of steel that have actual blades cut into them. And they work kind of like a rasp. In fact, you could really call them the modern equivalent of, of the rasp, the modern ev evolution of the rasp. And they come in different shapes. This is a circular one. This is a curved one for curved work. You have, excuse me, some, Thank you. You have a flat one, and it's like flat work. And they work really fast, and they're decent. I mean, I use them. I don't use them a lot, but I, well, when I use them, they're they're absolutely the perfect tool for the job. I should um, be careful now. And then finally, files which have little teeth cut in, little notches. I actually use more for metalworking than woodworking. Although, what I like to do is I'll use either a rasp or a surf form um, for initial shaping, get that smooth, then come up with, um, I'll follow it up with a file just to, you know, just to, kind of, just to make it pretty. You know, clean things up. and also makes sanding later on easier. Um, this is a um, eight inch file. This is called a four, a four in the hand, because it's actually four different tools. It's a flat rasp, a fat, a flat file, a curved rasp, and a curved Daddy, file. Help, Mama. <laughs> Mama. Yeah, and basically that's like I said, just used for shaping things. Uh, arches, circular work, table legs, things of that nature. So,
that's pretty much it. Um, and really, that brings us... I mean, there's not much to them. To any of the tools I showed. Um, I personally prefer surf forms to rasp. Although, a lot of your hardcore guys would look at my rasp, the four in the hand, and laugh, roll their eyes, and walk away and curse because they don't consider that an actual rasp. But then again, most of your serious guys would look at my entire tool collection and do the same thing. Um, but, <laughs> all right, Boogie, out, out. <laughs> but, you know what? I will get into that in my conclusion, which won't be next time, but the time after. I have one more segment to do, which covers miscellaneous tools, which is really not tools specific to woodworking, but are used in woodworking a lot. Like screws, pliers, you know, wrenches, you know, ratchets. And then I'll get into my conclusion, which, watch out, boo, which um, I'll go into the full explanation of why I did what I did and all that. So we got two more segments to do. Hopefully, I'll be able to get them out in a fairly quick succession. After that, that might be it. So if I never see you again after those next two, I wish you well. Thank you, and good night.